Alright, hello. Uh, I'm Jog, and welcome back to Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. I think a little bit selfish right now, if anything, just trying to distract my mind. Uh, but last time, we did the second dungeon, alongside getting some extra items and whatnot. And on this one, the main goal is to get to dungeon number three, and I'm also hoping for dungeon number four and get them out of the way. If we look at the map, it is... Well, we see the crystals over to where the Master Sword would have been in the Light World. So, we need to go to what is now known as the Skull Woods. Okay, this is not going well for me. At all. Uh, however, there is a kind of a secret to this place. You need to actually know how this all works out. Alright, well, that enemy being there just kind of ruined everything off of me. Be. Bees are not friendly. I definitely want to try and show off at the fact if you try going to the Skull Woods the normal way, either through like Kakariko or from the side over there on the on the right, you don't actually get to the dungeon. It's actually extremely neat how they did this. But the dungeon is itself, and if I can get rid of that annoying beeping. The dungeon itself is actually. The dungeon and the forest itself are kind of separated into two different areas. It's very interesting how they did it, and I'm just so I'm sorry about all the beeping. But yes, okay, well, first death. Thankfully, you got fairy. It was bound to happen sooner or later, but god dang. I didn't want to uh, use the cape. Mostly because I know that would get rid of the annoying beeping. But yes, this pathway right over to the right, which is actually north of where the uh, teleporter was by Kakariko, or Thief Town, is how we get up to what we can cons consider the main portion of this dungeon. Now, I'm avoiding these pits. There's not much of a reason. Uh, well, you don't have to be as precise. If you go down there, you will end up into a part of the dungeon, such as falling down this hole right here. But this one, I actually might have jumped the gun on. Also, this is actually a great spot to actually get yourself healed up. Yeah, I jumped the gun. Because I can't do much with this right now. Uh, but as I was saying, this is a great place to uh, spawn in. Because if we just use a magic mirror, boom. Right back here. Meaning an easy place just to get back hearts and bombs and anything else that you might possibly need. But I said I jumped the gun because we need to go down this way and need to just figure out hug the wall to be able to do this. Kind of rude. I'm I I don't know. To me that feels unintentional. Like clearly I did it, and it seems like that's what the designers had in mind. But it doesn't. I don't know. To me it just doesn't feel right. By the way. Let's explore this dungeon a little bit. We got ourselves a map. This place is very unique in the fact that it is actually divided up into multiple areas. Similar to dungeon number two, the Desert Palace. We'll have an entrance and then... Uh, yeah, we'll have ways of entering this place more than just once, and having to get through this place could be, quote, a uh, part of the dungeon itself. I want to say if we fall down or go down that hole down there, or either of those two holes, we're not going to get up to anywhere that we need. The reason being, I want to say both of those are just going to take us to... Not one way, but essentially, you'll find a key down there, but that key will take you just to the door that it unlocks. Also, be careful in this room, because anytime it wants to show up... No? There you are. Wall masters or floor masters, I'm not sure which one that is. And they will constantly respawn, so beware, they're annoying like that. And we have to move this, hit that button, and keep it pressed down, while at the same time dealing with this jerk! And killing him doesn't, like, get rid of him for good. Okay, get out of here if you don't mind, thank you. A uh, bomb wall to the right, that would lead to a room full of fairies, which could actually work for me. Big key! That's what I wanted to get out here. 
Oh, these guys. If you get hit by them, they will turn you into a... They'll turn you into Bunny Link. However, if you put the magic powder over them, it will turn it into a fairy. So that's essentially another form of an anti-fairy. And I do want to get myself a fairy, considering I did lose the one outside. No, wait, are you... Oh, I thought that was a fairy. Nope. I could have sworn that was a fairy fountain. Either way, I just want to essentially warp back out of here. Because we found the... We got the big key. We found the dungeon item already. Well, I said... Uh, this dungeon, I probably... This dungeon could possibly be one of the quickest ones to actually finish. Yeah, get out of here. That being said, uh... Alright, I somehow hit <laughs> two buttons at the same time right there. Uh, the dungeon boss for this location is unique. Uh, first off, the fire rod. Now we can cast, well, fire, kind of like the ice rod. Uh, so what was I saying? The boss of this location is a little bit unique in the fact that... Um... It's a little bit of a spoiler. The Master Sword is considered the level 2 sword. If you actually look over there, it's not a spoiler, it kind of says Sword 2. There is an upgrade to the sword called Sword 3. Sword 3 base attack is double that of the Master Sword, and the spin attack would be, well, double that. The boss of this location, I'm also going to show this off because why the heck not, will not take any damage from the level 3 sword's spin attack. For whatever reason, I don't know if it is a a rounding arrow or something else, but just be careful. Also, mummy, if we can actually light them on fire, that's a lot easier to actually deal with them. Key! So yes, you can find keys, but again, this key is just going to take me up this way, and this way just leads to this room that we've already been into. And I want to say that other pit over to the left kind of does a similar thing. There's no reason for me to do this, but hey, just for the sake of trying to show off things that I know I can show off, why the heck not? I believe this will also lead us to the compass! Dang it. Uh, if this does lead to the compass, at least to one little thing, that is interesting, because you don't need the compass. Yes. Uh, you don't need to get this one, but if you get this one, you now see the holes in the ground, for whatever reason, that were not there just a minute ago. That over there should take us over to that room that we were, yeah, that we fell into. Which means going up this way should lead to that other locked door, close to the entrance. I just don't think I have a key. Oh no, there's probably a key in this room. Yes, got it by this guy. This is not a bad dungeon. And for your first time going through, it can be a little confusing, and if you're interested in puzzles and trying to figure everything out, I think it's definitely worth it. Although the fact that you can go into this place and not think to leave, they have to go, like, look around to get the big key, is definitely something that could actually hurt you. I mean, you are limited to how much you can do, uh, but I would definitely say for a first time person, a person playing this for the first time, it can definitely be annoying in that aspect. But hey, that's sometimes the fun and challenge of everything. Also, maybe that's the room I'm thinking of. Maybe that one has the fairies? Either way, not important. The fire rod definitely is important, because if we need that, if we go up this way... How do you know to do what you need to do for this thing? Uh, trial and error, more or less. Fire rod that. Arrgh! Now, this is the dungeon proper. And by the end and proper, I mean this is where essentially the Master Sword would be located. Also, this is a bit of a maze. Uh, and as such, this is where... No, I always... This is where we will go to fight the boss. But first, we need keys. That should thankfully... That, thankfully, that should hopefully not be too difficult. Just get rid of you, don't mind me. No, nothing. Oh, ow. And key! There we go. Mirror, mirror in my hands. Take me back to the beginning of the land. Alright, key, door. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Alright, puzzle room. Not too bad. Just 
Keep on walking. Get out of here, you jerk. I'm gonna go this way, this way, and there we go. Now this room... Either be careful with your fire, or be careful with your shots. Reason being, we need fire for this one. We're gonna need magic. Now we can get magic back. Out of here, jerk. Uh, it's just, we need to light these torches. Get rid of you, get rid of you. Out. The thing with torches is that they do not stay lit forever, so you need to be quick. Thankfully, though, this is not too difficult. But if we wait too long, the torches will go out and that door will lock behind us. Also, that anti-fairy thing will go away. Well, we killed all the enemies. Killed all the enemies, but nothing. Cause secret passage. Again, trial and error, more or less. You have to just figure that out. And I believe it is you? No, it was him. This is why... <laughs> oh, like, the fire rod is definitely useful. Also, be ready, because we got the boss fight right here, and it would be a real shame to get caught by that guy. Now, I want to go to my bottles, because I want to get out the good bee, who's... Apparently, Mr. Translation is supposed to be the golden bee. Meet the most annoying boss in the game, Mothron, who is weak to the golden bee. Well, maybe not weak, but can take damage from the golden bee. This fight can be a bit annoying because of the fact that we have a moving floor, we have all these moving spike traps, and... Yeah, it's just annoying. Oh, God. It's easy to take damage and lose yourself. That's why I wanted to bring out the good B to help deal some damage, because I don't even know if I did anything myself to you yet. Uh, we could use fire. Not gonna solve everything, but Maltheron is, in my eyes, one of the worst bosses in this game. I'm gonna game over, it's probably gonna be the Maltheron. Yep. Well, I'm not dealing with that. Hold on. <laughs> Call it cheating. I don't care. Oh, I don't want to have to go back through the dungeon. If I said this guy is the worst. The floor. It's If I didn't have to deal with the floor moving, it wouldn't be so bad. But I got the floor. I got the spikes. Everything about this is just designed just to annoy you. And like, he... Taking a lot of hits, there we go. Die, monster. This is why I say, this is why I was saying before, I would not have gone after him first. I would have gone after, I would have gone for gem four first because ge after gem four, things become so much easier. Which will make sense in a bit. But yeah, I definitely don't recommend going to Skull Woods this soon. Ugh. Worst boss. Link. Think. Because of you, I just get the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. Do you know the prophecy of the Great Catalysm? This is the way I've heard it. If a person who has an evil heart gets the Triforce, a hero is destined to appear. And he alone must face the person who began the Great, the great Catalysm. If the evil one destroys the hero, nothing can save the world from his wicked reign. Only a person of the Knights of Hyrule, who protected the royalty of Hylia, can become the hero. You are of their bloodline, aren't you? Then you must rescue Zelda without fail. Do you understand? Yes. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Yeah! Okay, now get me the heck out of here. Although, do I really want to go to Thieves Town? I mean, maybe not, but I have to go there anyways. Uh, we do have to get out of here, and... Eh, yeah, Debatable which way would be faster. That is not where I want to go. I always get myself confused when I leave this place. I always think to myself, do I really go down that one? Because I'm like, that seems way, way too close. It is the one. I mean, we can always go to the light world and everything else, but... Nah, let's just do this. I'm glad I got to show off the good bee, though. And if you want, you can always get another good B. I, d I think Mothron is the only boss that is actually weak. Well, actually takes damage to the good B. Which I'm assuming means that its defenses are low. Which could be why the level 3 sword spin attack is ineffective. Because it might be like an overflow error. Now, 
The idea being, like, say you can have an integer between 1 to 128. Oh. Which means you can have 128 different numbers. Although, how that also works is that 0, if you have 0, 0 also has to count as a number. So you have a number between 0 and 127. It's 100, 128, rounding back to 0. Now, before we do anything else, if you look at the map, it is right here. Right in Thieves Town is this. Before we do that, there are just two things I want to do real quick. Well, three things, actually. First off, we got ourselves the Ocarina. We're told to go talk to the old man in the milk bar. Uh, oh, that's my son, Flute! Did you meet my son? Where is he? Is he alright? Oh, I see. Well, I can tell you what he wants to say. What? I can tell what you want to say just by the look in your eyes. Will you keep the flute? And will you play the sweet melody for the bird in the village square? I beg you, please. My son would probably want it that way. But still, I wish I could see him once more. Poor guy. But yes, he asked us to do one thing for him, and we will. Before, though... If we go up this way, back to Sassahad's house... Go over to the left... In this place. Somebody had someone to tell us back in the beginning. I think it was episode 1 or episode 2. Yo, Link, this house used to be the hideout for a gang of thieves. Hmm, we're going to Thieves Town. What was the leader's name? Oh yeah, his name was Blind, and he hated Bright Light a lot. Hint! Hint! Anyways, let's go down this way. We're asked to play a song for the bird in the town square, so... With that... Frickin' bird thing explodes, and out comes a duck. A majestic space duck. That's the center of fast travel around the world, and we'll deal with him later. For now, let's go back in here. So, this is the dungeon. How do you get in? You stab at it, you explode it, you grab it with A, you pull back, and poof! No idea how I figured that one out as a kid. I'm assuming I probably asked my cousin, he probably told me. Welcome to the Sieves Hideout, I believe this area is called. That chest probably contains the map of the compass. It's the map. This is not a very long dungeon. Again, if you know what you're doing, I would highly recommend doing this dungeon right after the Palace of Darkness. It's an easy dungeon. Hold on. An easy dungeon. While the reward, reward, while the item you technically get in this dungeon is not the best, it opens up so much that it makes it extremely worth it. Some things that make, some of the things that unlocks makes other parts of the game so much easier to deal with. And it's going to sound stupid, especially when you see what the item is. But when you see what we can do with it, you'll understand what I mean. Anyways, these rooms up here on the first floor are kind of shaped up like a square. We were on the bottom. We entered on the bottom left, went up to the top left, over to the top right, and now I'm just trying to get down to the bottom right and for my way down. No, I think I turned into a bunny. Oh no, I did not. Okay. Okay, so my plan now is to go over to the left hand side. I want to go from from the bottom right over to the bottom left, but we need to go from this way. We need to get from this bottom left corner specifically, because going down here is where we find ourselves the boss key. Oh, sorry, the big key. Yeah, right off the bat. Pretty early on, too. Ow. So, yeah, we got the key. Now we just need to get to the boss and get to the item, and this place would be easier than even Tower of Hero. I mean, yeah, there's enemies out here and they can hit pretty hard, but... Eh, nothing out here seems all that dangerous. Although I did forget to mention that some of the enemies out in... The Skull Woods could actually eat your shield. Probably should have mentioned that one. Bad of me for not. Anyways... 
I go up this way, we get an empty room. Huh. Well, according to the map and the compass, this is where the boss is supposed to be. So, yeah, that's... Something screwball is going on here. Anyway, we still got a dungeon to explore and a boss... Boss. A uh, dungeon item to be found. That's why I want to keep on exploring. These guys, kind of interesting. They essentially are like a blob or slime. They have a nucleus and you can only damage the nucleus, but with the nucleus destroyed, the outer coating goes with it. So yeah, I don't know how to describe it. No, get over here. Thank you. That hurt me a lot more than it should have. Okay, key and a locked door. How handy. It's almost like they didn't know how to do this otherwise, so they just give you this. Okay. Well, that was easy. Also, geckos! Uh, this is may this is something that may not be too obvious, because it was not too obvious to me. But, uh, that room that I talked back in the light world, where I talked to the one guy. Uh, this is essentially the dark world equivalent. If you actually went, uh, if you're out in the dark world, and I can possibly show it off when I leave, there was a strange looking building. It took me forever to realize, oh, this was a strange looking building. It looked like it was halfway in the ground, because it was. It's halfway into the ground, and we got sunlight peering in through the, uh, prison bar cells? I don't know what to call that. Alongside the fact that we got some cracked floor over there for whatever reason. Well, there we go. Hmm, looks like the, the light is going to shine right on down. Oh, what do they adds up into the world below. Hmm, seems right above the boss chamber. I wonder if that means anything. After all, they did say blind hate at light. Eh, I'm probably just imagining thing. All these other cracks on the floors, they're nothing as far as I know, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Also, I'm, I'm assuming Sessa had a little bit probably tells us something about blind... Oh, are you kidding me? That's so rude! <laughs> Fine. Anyways, I'm not going to change that back, because there was this other platform right out this way. Ah, uh, we still have yet to find our item. And I have still yet to lose my patience. Except that's a lie, I lost my patience at the boss fight. Alright, staircase. Reminds me a little bit of, a uh, Hyrule Castle a little bit. And I do appreciate this. You see this, you see this big freaking block, and you might think, okay, I'm not getting through that anytime soon. Have to kill the enemies, have to open up that door to the left. That does open that up, however. Not all that heavy. I don't know if that's intentional or what. I like to think it's kind of just the gag of it. Uh, kind of like this room. Everything is not always as it seems. This seems like we're gonna need a key. Didn't need a key. This looks like it's gonna need a key. Doesn't need a key. Unless it's the big key that we're using. I will gladly take another fairy. Yeah, I'll save that right now. I could probably have used it for health, but oh well. Anyways, key! Oh, thank you so very much! You saved my life! Please take me outside! Hmm. Odd. She must be one of the seven maidens, but we didn't fight the boss. I mean, hey, a victory is a victory, I guess. Also, be a little bit quick on this one, that's all I'm going to say. We got the Titan's Mitt. You can now lift the heaviest stones that were once impossible to budge. Yes. That's why I said to be a little bit quick. I mean, if you fall down, if you didn't get out in time, you just fall down and get back here. But if you are low on health, uh, too bad for you. I mean, you can always use the magic mirror and get yourself back. Also, if you think you can just leave the dungeon, no. Also, that trap. Don't go through it. It's not worth it. But yes, the Titan's Mitt, or Titan's Glove, whatever it was called. That is our treasure for this one, and again, I I, I know it's going to sound strange. It's going to sound like, is it really that worth it? I mean, we already had the Power Glove. What's the Titan's Mitt going to do? A little bit for us, actually. Anyways, let's go in here to the light. You'll be safe back here. Uh, yeah, too bright! <sighs> Say hello to Blind the Thief. And I'm going to say right now, I'm not going to use the cape right off the bat, but I do kind of recommend having the cape if you got it on you. A little bit annoying, and we just chopped off his head. And his head's now going insane. The level 2 shield is greater than half of this one. 
Also, every time, you may have noticed, every time we hit him, kind of goes a little bit insane. Also, be careful of this. If you try to go behind him, you're probably going to get hit just due to how the sprite lay layering goes. And there we go. He's lost two heads. Now down to three. But I find just using the cape to be great because I'm not worried about the floating heads or this guy. So it makes it all that easier. That's why I definitely recommend doing this one before the freaking Skull Woods. Oh, and he didn't get my stroll. I released it too late. Dang it! Link, because of you, I can escape the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you! As the wise men sealed the way to the Dark World, the Knights of Hyrule defended them from the attacks of evil monsters. I heard that the Knights of Hyrule were nearly wiped out in that battle. You are perhaps the last one to carry out the bloodline of the Knights. So essentially, it's destiny that we're alive and the ones taking care of all this. Thank you. It is ironic that the last one in the line has the potential to become the hero of legend. Is it? Again, that would be destiny, wouldn't it? It's in my blood. I'm the last one, so it would have to be me. Surely you can destroy Ganon. Do you understand? I guess. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Hiya! Alright, and I would say with that, we are done here for now. So I'm gonna say next time when we come back with The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. We're gonna be doing... Well... Gonna do a little hot piece gathering, and then... I guess we'll be moving on to dungeon number five? Five, yes. I can also show off that we can get to level six, although I don't have the thing just yet. And one last thing, because I forgot about this. If we use magic powder against this chicken... Wait, what? Oh, I could have sworn that was... Did I say the wrong place? I could have sworn that was it. Alright, shoot. Well, uh, I guess next time then. Into the house, but I swear I thought it was that one. There we go. What? You told me into a human? I can't even speak. Ah. It must be you who've always been teasing my friends. The weathercock is always watching you harass them. Well, this human shape is uncomfortable for me. Uh, I want to be a chicken again. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. You're out of luck. <laughs> You're stuck in the human. Bye.